From dining to living to wherever, we help give confused rooms new direction. This is the Confused Room Podcast. And welcome to the Confused Room Podcast. Tony and Jenny Bruski joining you once again. And uh, thank you for uh, tuning in. Be sure to press subscribe on whatever platform it is you may be viewing us on. Yeah. We do greatly appreciate that. Uh, be sure to uh, send in your uh, your image if you have a room you'd like some advice on what we can change up for you. Uh, if it's confused, you're like, huh, what should I do here? Just go to the website, confusedroom.com, and send in that image, and uh, we may use it on a future episode of the show. And it's free. It's free. And it's fun. Yeah, so if you've got a room <laughs> space, you have nothing to lose. We're not looking to break into your home and no. start uh, ripping things up. Uh, but you'll get a, a free uh, 3D uh, digital redesign. Uh, so do that. Or you can even uh, send it to us through Facebook as well if you prefer that. Uh, the website, confusedroom.com or right on our Facebook page. And uh, we may use it on a future episode of the program. Uh, tonight, uh, we have a bathroom space basement bathroom kind of the throwaway bathroom uh -huh. that uh you know it's kind of off there it's kind of laundry utility it's kind of has a shower in it for like when you have a guest once a year it maybe gets used and you're like oh my god i can't believe this head and shoulders expired in 98 and it's still <laughs> in there um it's that sort of a space and the request on this space was i don't really use this bathroom for much of anything other than laundry but i'm moving my laundry Anyhow, what can I do with this space to make it a bathroom I'd actually want to use? Sure. So there you go. Um, and that was also known they don't really have a true uh, master bath in the house okay. with any sort of, you know, luxurious escapism type feels, you know, that a lot of folks love with their bathrooms. Sure. So this is kind of the request to let's use this bathroom space to, to kind of be a little getaway, okay. kind of be a little space to go. And uh, and have uh, some alone time. Yeah. Sounds kind of bad. But, um. No, we all need that alone <laughs> time in the bathroom. Nobody needs company for that. Yeah, you just you know just relaxation. Yeah. And and there's it, the 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 tricky thing with a space like this when you're going for that feel I think is light because um, there's no natural light in here. This sure. Perfect dark room if you want to make it into a dark room. But uh, there, there's interesting ways I think of really brightening it up. Yes. So are. we'll jump into that in a moment and show you our design ideas. I want to ask you, I know we had a bathroom on the show two weeks ago, okay. I, I think. Um, and we were talking about like worst bathroom scenarios, mm -hmm. like worst bathroom you've ever been in and stuff like We didn't really touch on best bathrooms. Best bathrooms? Best bathrooms. So like in somebody's home? Well, I, I'm, I'm taking it from two angles. Okay. So I want to take it first from the best, uh, best public bathroom that you've ever been in where you just went, wow, now that was a bathroom experience. Or as Harper says to everything, when she goes into something that she really enjoys, she's like, wow, now that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a bathroom. <laughs> you know, she, she just really, sure. <laughs> really accents it out. What would be the best public bathroom that you were like, wow. And it may be just one of those things where I, I know mine, uh, it was one of those things where I'd never been in a bathroom where this was going on before, like where it was beyond just a stall and a sink. Okay. Um, I would have to say, do you remember Von Mar, that store yeah. in Wichita? Yeah. When they first opened before, you know, the years of wear and tear that happened on sure. public bathrooms, yeah. when they first opened, um, Olivia was a baby. Mm -hmm. And I, when I would go walk around the mall to, you know, get out of being at home alone with the baby, yeah. that was always the bathroom we made a straight beeline <laughs> to when it was time to feed or change because okay. it was clean. The stalls were full doors and they had like a lounge area, which not like you want to lay down, but nice, relaxing chairs sure. to. It was a great spot for. Just like what I said, yeah. feeding or changing. And I so appreciate that store and their bathrooms. <laughs> there you go. So that would be my, my best public one. Okay. I think this was on an episode of Seinfeld once, now that I think of it, where uh, it, it was it was actually on, I believe, the revival of Seinfeld on Curb Your Enthusiasm, uh -huh. where George was developing an app 
that you could yes. geographically point you to the best p- local public bathroom. It's like an Uber rated bathroom. Anywhere you are. <laughs> and quite honestly, I think that's a genius idea. I think it could still be done. Sure. And I think especially if you're like in a big city or something, uh, and maybe you're in a city you don't know much about, that is that'd be a lovely thing to have. Because there's so many times you're walking around like where's the bathroom and you're like, I don't know if this is good or not. And uh-huh. it's kind of a a crapshoot, literally, uh, of, of, well, is there going to be crap on the walls or is it going right. to be a clean, nice experience? Um, but, uh, okay. I would say I don't know. No, I do know where it was. And it, I, I can't say it's it's maybe the best public bathroom I've ever been in, but it was the first time I was ever like, oh, wow, I've never, okay. I've never experienced this in a bathroom. And... Um, I was alone. No, don't go there. It was a highway rest. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Don't go there. (laughs) I could never experience this. No, it was uh, actually, I believe, the uh, Hard Rock Cafe uh, in Chicago. And and what made it uh, interesting to me, and this is circa 1992, uh, was they had a bathroom attendant. Oh. I had never, Uh ever experienced someone, here's your towel, you know, and to this day, I still feel it's kind of silly and weird, <laughs> but um, but I, I had never seen that before. Yeah. Where there's somebody that actually works in the bathroom and they keep it clean uh-huh. and they're friendly, and it was like, wow, this is different. Yeah, and I mean, uh, so that was that was kind of a, an interesting thing that I had never ever experienced. Uh, was it the best one ever? I don't think so. Um, I'm just I'm excited now when you go into a, a bathroom at sometimes a nice restaurant and they have like uh, mouthwash. And like the little little Dixie cups yeah. for you to like, ooh, scope. That this will be great in between courses. <laughs> yeah, what? Oh, that just that stuff reminds me when they would give you fluoride at school. Yeah, I yeah. I, I, what, what's kind of gross is when when they do have that stuff and people don't really get super cleanly about it. Like, ooh, scope, and they they rinse their mouth and just spit it into the sink. Then, and they don't rinse the sink or anything. And it's just like, oh, someone just enjoyed some scope. <laughs> I hope that was I hope that was enjoyable. I remember drinking crap like that when I was a kid. Okay. Where it would be like I, I would swallow toothpaste and I would swallow mouthwash. And my mom be like, "Don't do that! Don't do it's, it's not good for you." No, it's not. Uh, but uh, I did that for a good year. Or so. I was about Harper's age. I was about five. Okay. So okay. I, I still do, I don't I don't like drinks. Isn't there like alcohol? <laughs> yeah. Like technically, it could probably get you buzzed if you drank enough scope. I, I guess. And probably also you probably throw up beforehand. Is it the same think. kind of alcohol? I don't know. I, I mean, maybe that's not even the case anymore. But I believe in in olden days, mm-hmm. the eighties and nineties, um, I believe there was a certain level. But you don't have to be a certain age to buy it. So there's probably not alcohol in there anymore. Or if it is, it's like of minimal. Sure. I don't know. Scope martinis after the show just to check. No, <laughs> check but let's out. talk about our creative juice right now. <laughs> yeah, our creative juice this week is uh, from Washington State. It's another Charles Smith wine. Uh, you'll recall they uh, sent us uh, some of their wines of substance uh, late last year. Yeah. Uh, it would have been like November or so. Uh, and those were excellent. And uh, we have uh, this one this time. This is the uh, Vino Rosso. And uh, it's pretty good stuff. Uh, Charles Smith out of, uh, like I said, Washington State. He is the guy who's kind of like the rock star of the wine world. Sure. Just very much his own personality, very much goes to the beat of his own drum. And uh, just a fun all-around guy. If you want to look at a, the most non-pretentious wine website... Uh, or anything about uh, you know a vintner or anything like that. Check out their website. It's just it's funny. He does all these kind of like there's just skits and bits on there with him kind of doing stuff like today I'm going to wash the windows and <laughs> it's it's funny. But he's a, it's a really interesting uh, place. They make a ton of excellent wines, um, and we have the uh, the Vino Rosso here today. Uh, and this one is available pretty much nationwide. So okay. uh, go ahead and check it out. Um, you recall some of the 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 artwork on their bottles. Very distinctive. Yeah. Um, and I know there's kind of some copycat going on now with some of these styles, but these are the ones who started it uh, back with, like, house wine and things of that nature. Okay. Uh, but uh, this is a great one. Uh, retails for right around, I believe, like 11 to 14 bucks, depending on what part of the country you're in. Sure. Um, and it's a, a cab, uh, 70% cab, uh, 30% San Uh So a bit of a blend here, uh, but really great wine out of Washington State. So definitely do check them out. They are our creative juice of the week, which I was sipping on all week during the day while I was making the design for this bathroom. No, I wasn't. I 
It's been that kind of week, huh? I, no, I save it for the show. <laughs> I save it for the show. Um, so. So I'm eager to see the bathroom that you did. Yeah. Because this was such a wonky little space as far as how the walls were moved and everything. Mm -hmm. So I just started knocking down walls in mine. I, uh, I actually put up a wall in mine. Well, I kind of did too, but I think you're going to be surprised at how I did mine. Okay. I'm curious to learn about it. Um, just by how we set this up, uh, I'm going to show the, uh, the before of this, and then I'm going to jump into uh, mine first, just because that's how we had arranged it. Uh, then we'll do Jenny's next. Uh, so this is the before. This is the basement bathroom that needs some help, needs some. And does not have to have the utility. No. Anymore. It was pretty much, I don't want the shower. You can get rid of the uh, the washer dryer. I just want a nice, relaxing bathroom. Okay. What do I do with this space? So here is what I did with this space. And because this room had no natural light and was tucked away in a basement, I really wanted to go with some brighter colors. And what better way to make white feel bright than to accent with black? I have a classic black and white tile floor with white shiplap planks lining all the walls of this room. I uh, used a, a bowl style sink on the uh, double vanity that I uh, painted with a distressed black uh, with a marble top. I went with a classic oversized claw bathtub and accented with a white chandelier above and added a mirror to help create more dimension to the room. I hid the toilet away where the washer and dryer once were and completely removed the corner shower. Placed a large black and white canvas art piece of a tree branch outline for some character near the uh, opposite of the entry vanity. Uh, and uh, even though the Space is shut off to windows. I really think it turned out great and really makes it feel like a really nice home bathroom retreat. I love the floor. Isn't it cool? I yeah. like that. Uh, I really like that that tile That's pattern. That's octagon and dot. It's octagon like and dot is what mm -hmm. it's called. Okay. I did not know that. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a name for it. Yes. Otherwise, I would have consulted you and said, what's this tile called? Right. So I would have put it in my description. Octagon and dot. Yeah, it's. I, I really I, I like that look. In fact, I know we're trying to figure out what to do with one of our bathroom floors. I, I We're thinking about penny tile. Is this a difficult one to deal with? No, it's not. And actually, I take that back. That one is not technically octagon and dot. That's all hexagon, but every so often... There's a black one. Hexagon and dot? No, just hexagon. <laughs> okay. Just but hexagon. it's not. It comes on a mesh. It's it's one of the easiest types of floors to sure. put down. Okay. You would think it's going to be a pain to grout, but mm -hmm. it, it's very easy. You just smear it and wipe it off, and it works great. It, it's a smooth tile, so mm -hmm. you don't have to really keep working it until yeah. you get it completely clean. That's interesting because, you know, if you've never done the tile work before and don't really know what you're getting into... Um, I could easily be confused by that and really think this is going to be a difficult one to, uh, to, to deal with and to work with. The hardest thing about it, and it's really all eyeballing, is just mm -hmm. making sure each one foot by one foot mesh, where the, the ends of the two mesh pieces meet, that that gap isn't any wider or more narrow than the rest of the gaps in the tiles on the mesh. Okay. Otherwise, you'll start to kind of see the outline of each individual. Sure square foot mesh yeah. piece. So as long as you can get that to where it's pretty uniform, and mm -hmm. that's not hard to do. You no. can even get spacers if you need to. Okay. So. Yeah, I, I like, I, I like I said, I ripped the wall out of here. The, the, the tub is where the shower once was. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't care about the shower. And I love the old clawfoot bathtubs. And it, it's interesting because sometimes you think, oh, what about like a, a whirlpool tub or something? Some of these, the old clawfoot ones, they're so deep, mm -hmm. and it's like, if you don't care about the jets, this does just as good of a job, if not better, because if this is just like a one person, I just want to go in here by myself and relax, you know, you're better off with a, a tub like this where you can kind of, you know, put your arms up a little bit. There's a way to, you could put uh, one of the reading boards out in front if you want. Sure. I have an accented with a board on the side uh, with some candles. You can easily put like a Bluetooth radio or something there uh, or some speakers to, uh, you know, make it any way you want. And I did a lot of mirrors in here as well because I think the mirrors, uh, the biggest thing was how do I make this, you know, bright but relaxing bright? Not sure. like, oh, my God, uh, you know, here comes the sun. But just, you know spa-like almost like i look at this and i go it's kind of titanic-y in a certain way it kind of is yeah. and, and you know when you add a lot of texture to white that tones it down 
Mm -hmm. It doesn't make it like looking at a white piece of paper. When you start to have the lines of the ship lap and the grout lines in the floor, it, it tones it down yeah. and adds some dimension just because you get a little bit of shadow. Mm -hmm. And I think it's an interesting thing when you play with the colors because it's like, okay, bright colors. Uh, the And I really find this, the more I play with this stuff, the more I, if I use a white and I'm going for a white bright, the op you want to use the opposite with it as well the black because that's what really is going to make the white pop as long as the white is the predominant color um that really if you went with white trim or a white cabinet with all the white it nothing would pop it would all just be kind of bland it's amazing how the the darker color really the way it works to the eye to contrast yeah. it and, and make it really pop out right so there you go okay would you have this bathroom in your house i would i would i really like that and i like how you bumped up the uh middle of the vanity yeah, that was kind of an interesting little you know, step to it where it's not just straight flat. You can kind of have a different level of stuff. And, and I think it also helps, too, with things like, like shaving or cleaning where it's not everything's it just going to go everywhere. It keeps the hairs it on does. its appropriate side. Yes, and it I does. appreciate that. <laughs> I know because I just shaved tonight. Yeah, and there's a whole crop of fur on the side of the house now. And I shaved in your sink just for the heck of it, just to see you know, if you'd noticed or not. I wouldn't. Have I shaved. didn't. I wouldn't have shaved over your sink either. So. But uh, I, uh, you're right. There's a crop of fur on the side of the house, although maybe some animals have found it now and are making a nest. Okay. There's probably somebody covering up tonight with Tony's former beard. Should we talk about my bathroom? Sure, why not? Let's okay. go into that. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay, here's Jenny's space. My goal with the space was, like you said, to make it a master bath retreat. But I think about how people use their master bath now. And one of my favorite of all time bathrooms was the one that had the giant shower. So I evened up the walls. I took out that little wall that kind of blocked the original shower. And then where the washer dryer had been, I made that a straight wall all the way. So the room became rectangular again. And I made the whole end of the room one large walk-in shower, floor to ceiling tile, um, very tall glass. So you almost get that steam room sauna effect. Uh, also put in a double vanity so that there is a his and her space or hers and her space, whatever, however they're sharing. And I put in an extra tall cabinet for storage because that was my one thing I was worried about was if there are cabinets above the existing washer and dryer, they're going to lose storage. So I wanted to make sure that wasn't an issue. Went with a lot of natural textures, uh, a wood look on the floor, did subway tile in the shower, but went with a dark uh, blue vanity. And I used grass cloth on the walls with kind of a grid plank um, of white trim. And the reason I did that was so that the wall covering became the artwork itself. And I just did that above the vanity and also on the back wall across from the vanity. Added a lot of recessed lighting and also some sconce lighting in between the mirrors. And I think it turned out nice and light and bright, but still relaxing. How did you do the uh, the walls, the, the the cross hatch thing? I had to find the. Is it like a I had to find the grass cloth that I wanted, and I went and I searched the internet and uh -huh. found it, and then I made the pattern and had that repeat. So you, so this could be essentially like a wallpaper almost that yes, goes up. Okay, the grass cloth would be a wallpaper, and then that would be a wood trim detail okay. that goes over it. Okay, so the white is the wood trim. Yeah, essentially, it's a crosshatch wood trim. It's not um, paint or, no, or lines of paint. It's kind okay. of almost, I guess, for lack of a better term, like a full wall wainscoting okay. that has grass cloth inset into the sure. squares. So if you were to, to try and do that, I really like that look. You could do basically the grass cloth. First. Wallpaper first. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you basically are building this crosshatch wainscoting yeah. all the way uh, to the ceiling, essentially. Right. Okay, yeah. I like that look a lot. That, that's really, that's cool. It, 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 there's a retroness to it, mm -hmm. and there's a modernness to it. I mean, almost like retro modern, but there's also very much today sure. with it as well. It's like, it's, it's three things in one. Um, but I like it a lot. That's that's a cool idea for that, uh, Thank you. For that bathroom. Um, I'm just going to pull up the picture again to take another look at that. So you really, you, you, you utilized all that space where the uh, the washer and dryer were. I just completely 
continue that wall mm-hmm. straight so it's yeah. a big rectangular bathroom yeah and you know that could easily be not a shower down there you could put a big tub like mm-hmm. you did yeah but i just i thought you know sometimes there's nothing like a hot steamy shower to yeah. melt away sore muscles and stress and i like the idea of the uh like the bench in the shower the you know, teak bench yeah. you sure. can sit there you can just kind of relax and um you know especially if you know that's a good thing you know i i I, I rarely ever sit down. I know our shower has like it's, it's the built-in the the piece, right? Where it's a small little kind of corner. It's more like a leg shaving. It's type a leg shaving type foot rest. Yeah, thing. it's not big, um, but I have utilized sitting on it. Like if I have like a really bad cold or mm-hmm. something, and I'm just like trying to clear my sinuses and just run water over my head. And I so appreciate having a place to sit mm-hmm. in there, and that would be perfect for uh, a space like that. I really enjoyed the big shower. Best home bathroom that you've ever been into. It doesn't have to be yours. This could be any bathroom you've ever been into that was at at someone's residence. I have no idea. And I know that's a lame answer. You you gotta have an idea. You gotta have an answer. You know, I, I, there's elements of the last bathroom that we had that I would say were my favorite of the Mm -hmm. home bathroom. Sure. But like what the the shower the shower yeah. for one um but i I don't know that I've been in a bathroom that I could say it stands out in my mind because i'm I'm not not thinking of one sure <laughs> and now I said you have to have one, and I'm kind of like, hmm, I know I talked about one on a previous episode where it was like, ooh, they put rocks in their sink, and this was when there right. was a new thing I was kind of like, oh, this is amazing uh in two thousand six or whatever um as far as like a home bathroom that i just went oh wow to um you know i I think it would it would probably i know i know what it was and this is a neat one this is one where um it was a home that was very much a, a retro home that had been preserved um almost scarily preserved to the point of like how how well is all of this surviving uh, to this day? Um, and it was in Wausau, Wisconsin. Uh, a friend of mine and his wife had it. I remember going over there for dinner. And I'll just set some uh, settings of this house. The The bathroom, or the, the kitchen rather, had all of the metal cabinetry. Okay. Where it almost looked like, you know, ref- refrigerator doors, you know, sure. retro refrigerator doors. And it was like that kind of bright blue mm-hmm. color. Um, and the whole rest of the house very much had kind of that mid-century, modern-esque type fixtures, the wood. I mean, it was very Burt Reynolds-y. Um, that you know, wouldn't be Burt Reynolds. Well, I, I, maybe not Burt, but it, it had wood, a lot of dark yeah. wood throughout it with bright pops of color. But the bathroom had what would have probably been a very early soaker tub okay and it was that same blue uh-huh. jets that one thing wasn't even a thing was it one of the big square it was type? it was a heart heart almost i believe uh-huh. if i re- it was like i believe it was heart shaped um i mean, I mean not not super duper heart shaped but kind of a corner mm-hmm. almost like ours mm-hmm. but it's not but it was, it was and it was fairly shallow for the you know what it was but just the uh, the makeup of it and the whole room was just so retro and so you don't see this anymore and you couldn't recreate it because you couldn't buy the stuff to do it. Sure. And and I believe the whole tub was porcelain. Okay. And I remember they had a dinner party and they had like, you know, some candles and votives floating in the, the tub in the bathroom because it's the only bathroom in the yeah. house to use. Um, but I thought, well, this is such a cool, weird retro bathroom. <laughs> it was like going back in time. <laughs> and that, that I just thought was really neat. And that's one of those things about those older homes where – there's a lot of ways to recreate and to to do kind of retro things if that's the style you're going for. But when you're actually in the original variation of it, the original version of it, you really realize you can't recreate this. That The product doesn't exist unless you were to re- reclaim it out of someone's in yeah. a tub like that. You, you're not going right. to – you can't get it. Right. But that, that to me just really stood out as a really neat mm-hmm. uh, home bathroom. That's cool. So there you go. The retro. I like the retro. I know so, you do. There you go. All right. I think that wraps up this episode of Confused Room in our bathroom. Uh, on our next episode uh, this week, uh, this is uh, the day's coming out. This is Monday's episode. On uh, our next episode that comes out on Wednesday, we're going to be taking on a basement 
speakeasy yeah. uh, area. And I'm just going to show a quick little preview of that. If you're watching this on YouTube or on our website, uh, this is uh, basically they were trying to go for speakeasy. It's basically what I think was supposed to be a basement bedroom, uh, but just has a lot of stuff in it. I love when they incorporate mug shots. Yeah. I think that really sets the tone. <laughs> He's going to go for mugshot wallpaper? No, no. <laughs> but that's what they were going for. I mean, and, and, that, and I can't say speakeasies had a lot of mugshots in them. But uh, it's, it's one of those things where you kind of you jump towards the, oh, this is kind of kitsch. This kind of fits the era, but it doesn't really fit what you're trying to do. It's kind of the same as when you want a beach feel room, and so you throw a bunch of wooden sailboats and pictures of beaches in it. <laughs> sure. And that doesn't sure. doesn't quite change the room. It doesn't now quite you've do got it. New pictures. Yeah, so that's on uh, Wednesday's episode. Uh, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, uh, wherever you listen to uh, podcasts. Uh, we would uh, greatly appreciate that. Leave us a review. That also helps us quite a bit as well. All right, uh, so uh, check that out on Wednesday's episode. If you're watching us on Facebook, stick around. We're going to do that episode next as we do this live every single Thursday on Facebook. Until next time, for Jenny Bruski, I'm Tony Bruski. Thanks for watching another episode of Confused Room.